Good evening, gospel revolutionaries around the whole planet. Hope you're having a good evening this evening. Welcome to the uh, new bonus room. We are so glad to have you here. Um, if you are looking at this, you're probably reading the very first part of this uh, before you ever clicked on the video, uh, unless you're watching live. And uh, I want to open with this statement. And this statement I want to make very clear, uh, as it will be in the title of this particular video. I want to say openly and publicly to Francois Detroit. Don Keithley, Andre Rabe, and others actually. Uh, it take me too long to go through the list of all the names of uh, people that I have disagreed with who have said that God the Father has never been angry with anyone. And I said, yo, yes, he has. And I was wrong. God the Father has never been angry with anyone. Now, I realize that for you gospel revolutionaries out there, this is a big shock, uh, but we want to show you where that they get their proof from, and this is irrefutable. So uh, you guys know I've been known to change my mind, so uh, here we go. Uh, uh, and, and like I said, that a lot of these verses that we're going to look at, these are ones that they turn to uh, and have pointed out to us. And I don't know why I never saw it, but I just didn't. That's all there is to it. Uh, we're going to start back in. All of these verses are going to be in John. There's, Believe me, there's much more to confirm what they've said than what I'll be able to present to you here in this brief video. But one of them is John chapter 14, verse 9, uh, where uh, Jesus is speaking to Philip. And he said, Jesus said unto him, have I been so long time with you and you uh, and yet uh, hast thou not known me? He that has seen me hath seen the father and sayest thou then show us the father. Now, uh, the one thing that these guys and others have pointed out is that Jesus never did any of the things that, uh, that his father did in the Old Testament. And uh, we agree with that. Jesus never did any of those things. There's, there are some things that you have to acknowledge. Jesus did get pretty uh, uh, surly, if you will, when he told the Samaritan woman that... Uh, uh, that dogs uh, uh, have to eat from the scraps from the table. He, he did have some pretty uh, curt things to say, although I think he had uh, purpose in leading them to that. Uh, we do point out the fact that he did make a scourge of cords and drive them out of the temple. And as they've said, there is no proof he ever hit anybody. And uh, we can't prove that he ever hit anybody at all, but he did drive them out, whatever that means. Uh, but still, no signs of the way that his uh, the way that Jesus's father uh, acted in the Old Testament. Now, uh, it puts us at a quandary, though, as to figuring out why in the world is this recorded in the Old Testament. Now, their resolve is that the Old Testament was wrong. Uh, let me tell you one thing that I still don't agree with. I don't agree that the scriptures are incorrect. I don't agree that Moses got it wrong. I do not agree that uh, the scriptures cannot be relied on. I think they can be relied on heavily, and we're going to rely on them tonight. Um, so as we look at these, uh, let's go then from uh, there to John chapter 5. I know, GRs, I know that you guys are in a state of shock right now. Uh, and uh, I just ask you to hold on because, you know, when you're wrong, I told you that I'd always say if I was wrong, I would tell you that I was wrong. And I was wrong. They teach that God the Father was never angry with anyone. And they are Right. 
so what we're going to look at here then is continued confirmation of what they have taught. And the next one we're going to go to is in uh, John chapter, where do I want to go to? I want to go to John, that was 14. Let's go to John chapter 5. In John chapter 5, which is another uh, favorite verse, and it's a wonderful verse, I have no reason not to go to it. Uh, John chapter 5, and uh, we're looking uh, at where uh, Jesus uh, said unto them, Then answered Jesus and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, The Son can do nothing of himself but what he seeth the Father do. So Jesus made it clear that whatever he saw God as his Father do, that's what he did as a father-son relationship here. For what things soever he doeth, these also doeth the Son likewise. So uh, we do know that Jesus was uh, the Son of God, still the Son of God, and we can find that staying in John, we can affirm that also. Uh, and we find that here in John chapter 1 and in verse 14. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Um, the only begotten of the Father. So... What about Adam? Was he not begotten of the Father? Can we classify all of the people in the Old Testament as the sons of God? Remember, I'm affirming the teaching that God the Father has never been angry with any of his children. Never. Now, let's, this, this gets a little bit more clarified if we read in John chapter 8. So let's, uh, you guys go there with me, if you will. And let's see what happens here in John chapter 8. And we're going to go in verse 38, and we're going to read down quite a bit here, because this gets very interesting here. Um, because here, uh, remember, they got mad at Jesus and said, "Where?" he said, why are you trying to stone me to death because of these good works? And he said, no, because you have made yourself equal with God. And uh, so that seemed to be the problem. So here in John chapter 8, he says, um, uh, I, I speak that which I have seen with my father and you do that which you have seen with your father. Well, right here, Jesus is telling them, God is not your father. He says, my daddy. He's not your daddy. <laughs> uh, they answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. And that's what the uh, Old Testament confirms. There's not a place where that they ever called God the father. In fact, uh, if you know the truth of it, the Jewish people would have never, ever entertained the thought about God being their father. Abraham was their father. And uh, that's exactly the way they looked at it. And God was their creator. It says, uh, but now you seek to kill me, a man that hath told you the truth, which I have heard of God. This did not Abraham. You do the deeds of your father. Oh, wow. So he's saying that God is not these guys' father. He said, then said they to him, we do not, uh, we be not born of fornicators. We have one father, even God. Now you're going to find this is the only time they ever attempted to claim that God was their father. Now Jesus had something to say about that. And this is exactly what he said. Uh, Jesus said unto them, if God were your father, you would love me. For I proceed from uh, God. I proceeded forth and came from God. 
neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Now, seeing Jesus, as we just read in John chapter 1, how did he get here? He was the first begotten of God. He was the first son of God. God didn't have any children or sons. There were children of Abraham, but there were no children of God or no sons of God under the old covenant. Remember, God has never been angry with any of his children. Verse 43, why do you not understand my speech? Even because you cannot hear my word. Ye are of your father, the devil. Whoa, <laughs> it's like, no, you've, you've misidentified your father. He said, you're of your father, the devil, and the lust of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. And because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. Which of you convinceth me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do you not believe? Uh, he that is of God heareth God's words. So he's telling them, you're not, you're not uh, children of God. You didn't even come out of God. You didn't even, you didn't even come from God. <laughs> you did not even come from God, uh, or you'd have been able to hear my words. And so this story goes on. And uh, uh, but uh, what we need to do here is uh, stop and realize that. Uh, Jesus has really exposed something here very powerful. And that is that the Father, God, has never been angry with any of his children. We're going to be going into Romans chapter 8 with you on this, uh, on our upcoming PowerCast uh, that will actually come out in uh, the first part of February, I believe. But we're going to be doing the recording on this session, and uh, we're going to show you. You remember where he says in Romans, he says, But now that God has sent forth his spirit into our spirit, that we, are, we now cry, Abba, Father. But you see, nobody was crying, Abba, Father, before the new birth. Nobody. Because there was nobody born of God. There was nobody born of God. Now, um, in uh, so Jesus has made it very clear that uh, they were not of God because they were not out of God. And neither, let me tell you what, not only did, did Jesus tell them they didn't come out of God, let me tell you else, who else did not come out of God. Adam didn't come out of God. Moses didn't come out of God. Elijah didn't come out of God. Elijah and all of these guys and everyone born after Adam, they came along as a creation of God. They were born of Adam. They were not born of God. And then when God decided to try to explain what it is to be born of a seed, he then set up the nation of Israel and the, the seed of Abraham and began to explain what father and son and what a seed would do. And then he began to tell them about his seed. God's seed came from God. He was born of the spirit, not of the flesh. Adam was not born of the Spirit, and neither was anyone else until Jesus Christ. Did you not read that? Did we read that together in John chapter 1? Jesus was the first begotten and only and first begotten Son of God. God has never been angry with any of his sons. None of his children has he ever been angry with? The issue is he didn't have any children until after Jesus rose from the dead. Oh, I take that back. His first child was Jesus. God didn't know what it was like to be a human. 
It's made very clear in the New Testament that Jesus in the book of Hebrews, that the reason that God came in the form of a man is so that he could now be touched by the feelings of man's infirmities because God couldn't even be touched by the feelings of man's weaknesses. He couldn't even be touched by the feelings of their pains or their woes. These were not things that God had ever experienced. And now Jesus comes here and God the Father gets to experience what pain's like. God, his father, gets to experience what rejection is like. Also that Jesus Christ could become a merciful and faithful high priest. Jesus took the entire planet into himself, according to Ephesians. He rebirthed. Everyone, according to 1 Corinthians, all of chapter 15. In one resurrection, he brought forth all the entire world and was birthed into the presence of God as children of God. Wow. Now we have room for Isaiah 53 and 54. When God said, that once he gets children, <laughs> he will never be angry again. Once he becomes a father, changes everything. Adam was made out of dirt. He did not come out of God. He came out of dirt. He came out of the mind of God. But that's a difference between, that's what a creator does. A creator brings something out of his mind. But you see, to have a child, it has to come out of your loins. That's how Jesus was born, of Mary. That's exactly what happened. And then the reproduction of that happened. And we now can confirm that Mirror Bible, Global Grace Seminary, they're all right. God the Father has never been angry with any of his children. The issue is he never had any until Jesus. And all the rest came at the resurrection of the dead in Christ Jesus. So you don't have to struggle with this. I know it's, uh, see, and the thing is, uh, I, I know the words Abba and uh, uh, Daddy and all of the words that are used because you just can't imagine that God as a father could ever do anything like those things in the Old Testament. But God as a creator did all of those things. Now, there's some of them that he didn't do because a lot of people misread it. It's just like the bashing the baby's brains out thing. God never did that. That was a prayer <laughs> that somebody was really angry. You go back and read it yourself. And uh, he prayed and asked God to bash their baby's brains out <laughs> on the rocks. Now, I'm laughing about it because it is not because of the situation, but because people have taken that and said that, well, that's why we can't accept this, God bashing babies' brains out. Uh, God never did that. Uh, somebody prayed that he would, just like many of you in your days have asked God to harm somebody for you. Oh, we had it in our days, right? Folks, we love you. I am sorry that I had to apologize to uh, all of these guys and everybody who said that God the Father, you can see it in Christ. And in Christ, he's, uh, Jesus is the Son of God. And he said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And what you have to accept, though, that's a father-son relationship. The very first one on planet Earth. And now you have a father-son relationship. And he has never been angry with you. And never.
never will be.